Hey everyone, it's Neil and Thomas from neilpoint.com. We are back with another reaction video for the Eurovision entries of 2024. Um, another Super Saturday has passed and Denmark was one of the countries to pick their song and they picked Saba and her song Sand and we are about to listen to the song and react. So let's see what they have to offer. like the beat in this song it's very satisfying but there's something about the static staging that sort of bugs me a little bit a bit that was cool lasers are very cool it sort of gives a another dimension to the performance Woo! how many lights do you want yeah that is a lot Saba, all of them Bravo. Looks great. So that, I think for me, that's my first time watching it because I watched Denmark live. I uh, so performed once and then performed in the super final. That's my sec that's the second time watching uh, one of the videos clips. And I've got to say, it just gets a little bit stronger and stronger every time you hear it. I think it's got a really nice repetitive hook, which obviously is going to get in your head a little bit, I think. And it's easy, accessible. I think her voice is fantastic. We're going to have a lot to say about the staging, but I do think Denmark have chosen a very good song here, um, for especially for a country on a very non-qualification streak uh, currently. Undeservingly, in my opinion. Um, there were at least one or two songs in the last couple of years that I really, really liked. Um, you know, I really love Fido Flama. It is still one of my go-to karaoke songs. Like sometimes I'll just put that karaoke, that instrumental version on on YouTube with my headphones in, and I'll just pretend to be Danish and sing along. I love that song so much. But Fair yeah, Billy. they have not done all too well there uh, in the last couple of years, unfortunately. No, but I do think this is one that could get them out of that. Right? I think it sounds. It doesn't sound original I'll, I'll say that mm. it doesn't sound it doesn't sound like something we haven't heard before but what it is is really good and i yeah. think that i think for a country that's been non-qualifying that's your most important thing at the moment is to just get a song that works and is enjoyable um what do you think yeah, I, I was really pleasantly surprised because I had not been listening to any of the DNGP songs beforehand. Um, so, and last night um, I was doing the uh, review for Finland for our uh, blog. So <laughs> I was busy with that. So I caught up with the songs that uh, won the national finals last night, uh, one by one. And then I was really surprised with Denmark. I was like, oh, okay, this is very good. Because I had read a lot of comments on Twitter saying, oh, you know, there's not really any good options for Denmark. They're not going to qualify again, blah, blah, blah. And then I heard the song and I was like, wow, this is actually quite good. Um, and you're right. It's not original. It's not groundbreaking. It's not like we have never seen anything like this before. In fact, in my opinion, it sounds very similar to um, a previous Danish entry, which we didn't get to see on the Eurovision stage, unfortunately, uh, due to COVID. Um, but it, it is a very solid entry. Um, I think we have a partly finished staging concept, which I like. Um, I like her outfits. I like the lighting. I like the, you know, like the lasers and the light show at the end. It just needs a little more. It needs to be amplified a little bit for me. Uh, but the song is very good. It has a very good beat, which is very satisfying. Um, I like her vocal as well. It's not 100% pitch perfect. But there are certain songs, I don't know how to explain it, there's just a certain imperfection to her vocal that I genuinely like. It makes it more accessible in a way. Because sometimes when you have a singer that's pitch perfect from start to finish, it's just like, how is that even possible? How do you sing like that? And like with her, it's just, it feels a little more... It's real. 
you know, it's it's, it's real. It's, real, and I like can... that. Yeah, she 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 was giving it her all for the high notes, and it wasn't always a hundred percent perfect, but that's just what makes it perfect for me. Um, I, I don't know need... results wise. Oh, sorry, I don't know results wise. Gonna go like I'm really hoping that Denmark gets out of that non qualification streak, but I genuinely don't have the guts to say that it will because it because it is so um unoriginal which sounds like a very bad word because it is a good song but i don't know if people if people are going to be tired of seeing something like this or hearing something like this at Europe. yeah that's my I, only concern i think what helps is this is in semi-final two so songs that we've got so far uh, we have albania um, we know that Austria is coming with We Will Rave. Um, we've got Loop in there. Uh, we've got Dons um, and San Marino are going to be in there as well. I don't think, I think we are all expecting semi final one to be a bit more of the bloodbath of a semi final. Mm. So maybe that luck might help it. Um, obviously, it depends what countries like San Marino send, what how Greece actually sounds when we get it, what, uh, yeah. etc. But I think this is their strongest entry for years. Um, and this is coming from someone who unironically enjoys uh, uh, Riley's entry from last year mm -hmm. uh, and his follow-up song. I do genuinely think it's a good song. The station was not it and the performance was not great, but the studio cut's good. But this performance, I think, has given me a, more than enough to qualify um, as as a televote only, which does hamper a little bit, uh, but I, I think it, I think it's safe to go through. Um, when it gets through, though, I'm not sure because I think what that's when the originality factor might get it. You know, we've already spoken a bit about Sylvester Belt being new and innovative and fresh, um, and we've yeah. got other songs in here, in here that feel like that, and. When you weigh up against this, you know, this doesn't cut that mark in, in the same way for me. So if it qualifies, which I think it will, I'm going to say lower side of the leaderboard somewhere around, I'd say 18th to 21st. Like I'm not, I'm not, I don't see it coming dead last or anything like that, but I don't see no. it doing particularly fantastically. Mm. Yeah, and I think at the end of the day, um, if it qualifies, it's the main the main issue is going to be when all the songs are finished, when it's time to start coding, are you going to remember this in a lineup of 20, what is going to be 26 countries um, competing? That's sort of where I'm, because in the semi-final, there's like, what, 16, 17 songs, tops? Um, uh, yeah, not so even that. I think it's, is it, is it 16 and 17 or what is it? I think it's probably 16 in semi-final two. Yeah, 16. So 15 in semi-final one, 16 in semi-final two. So that's that's fine. Like when you have 16 songs, that should be enough, you know, to still remember, you know, if they have that cool laser show to still remember it and vote for it. But after 26 countries, I don't know, um, which is a shame because it is a, it is a fun song, but I don't see this scoring very high um and depending you know you, you we don't know what other countries are going to send we are talking about semi-final one being um the bloodbath semi but you know we've had several smaller countries who do not tend to do very well at eurovision really delivering this year lithuania is one of them it's not like they've had the best track record like you said it yourself they their highest um placement uh, to date is a sixth place for the group i think it wasn't the so, RIP, it was um, We Are the Winners of Eurovision. Or we Are the Winners. What was the, the RIP? Were they seventh or, or eighth? I think they, were, think they were top ten, but I can't remember where, but they were. Yeah, lower top or ten. They were e or maybe they equalised it, one of the two. I don't know. They might have been eighth or ninth, I don't know. Um, but anyway, my point is, it's not like they usually tend to do well, but now they've got a killer song. You know, we've got um, another country we're going to be talking about later, Estonia, who you know, love it or hate it, is bringing fun to the competition. And there's going to be a lot of those fun songs. Songs, you know, so 
it could, you know, it, there's no saying whether semifinal two is going to be the weaker semi. You know, San Marino might come up with a banger. We don't know. Belgium might come up with a banger. We have no idea. We have no clue. We just so, have our fingers crossed. Yeah, <laughs> we do. Um, so I wouldn't, this is not a safe qualifier. For me, this is a borderline qualifier. I like the song and I have it firmly in my top 10 uh, at this point. But me liking or loving the song does not translate into votes oh. and, and, and into qualifying. So I fear for it. So it's really going to depend on their staging package and what the other countries are bringing. Well, we can only hope that they do elevate that station because I think that is going to be the, one of the deciding factors. I don't think mm. her performance wise or I don't think it even necessarily needs any sort of revamp. Uh, no. It just it just needs elevated staging. Um, yeah. And I think that will be the key as to whether it does qualify or not. But I yeah. think for me, it's a qualifier, but I'm hardly ever right. So we, we'll we we'll just leave that one there. I do enjoy it. I think it's a great song. I read somewhere that it's the first time ever that Denmark have been represented by a black woman. Um, yeah, which considering yeah, it's the year well. 2024 is insane, but we're getting some history and representation there as well. Um, so that's always nice to see. Nice to see some diverse, more diversity at Eurovision. But, um, we don't yeah. always get a lot of it, so it is quite nice. Um, no. So uh, I wish her all the best. I really love, I really do enjoy that song and it is going onto my playlist uh, as soon as we come off of this. Um, but yeah, we've got so much more to come. There's so many reviews already there. So at the end of the video, there's a playlist that'll pop up. How exciting. And you can watch all of our reviews there. Uh, you can also keep an eye at our website, neopla.com and Neopla blog on Twitter and Instagram. We try our best to keep you up to date with all the goings on. But there's so many goddamn goings on that who even knows what's going on anymore? Um, mm -hmm. But uh, keep an eye out and Please keep interacting, like, share, subscribe, whatever you need to do to help us out. Uh, we do really, really appreciate it. So thank you so much. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Neil Poir. And you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Pairaton Rieguya. And we'll see you again very soon. Bye. Bye.